Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's talk on Social Entrepreneurship 101. My name is Sydney Thompson. I am an Epicenter Program Lead, and Epicenter is an incubation and on-campus linked accelerator. We're located at the University of Windsor in Windsor, Ontario. Uh, we have lots of different programs, workshops, events, competitions, and all other sorts of resources to help entrepreneurs start and grow a successful business. If you'd like to learn more, please visit our website at epicenterewindsor.ca. So to hop right into today's talk, uh, what is a social enterprise? So if you've gone to Google and typed in the definition of a social enterprise, you've probably realized there actually isn't a formal definition. And that's because different regions actually describe social enterprises differently. So this definition is actually pulled from the Ontario Strategy for Social Entrepreneurship, which was developed in 2016. So it describes a social enterprise as an organization that uses business strategies to achieve a social or environmental impact. So while generating revenue from the sale of goods and services, social enterprises also expressly intend to create positive outcomes and they measure their results. As the business grows, the social impact grows. So we are going to talk throughout this presentation the differences between a social enterprise, a nonprofit and charity organization, and then on the other side of that, a for-profit organization, and where social entrepreneurship lies in the middle of that. While we're on this slide, though, one really important thing to remember is that a social enterprise uses business strategies to achieve that social or environmental impact. So that means a social enterprise model is a for-profit model, and that for-profit comes from the sale of goods and services. So again, when we do the comparison between nonprofit, nonprofit and charities, I want you to keep that in just in the back of your mind. So social entrepreneurs differ from traditional entrepreneurs in mainly two ways. So the first is their earned income strategies are tied directly to the mission. So everything coming into the business, all the revenue, all the money is going back into helping grow that social enterprise. So as we saw on the previous slide, if we go back, as the business grows, the social impact grows. And ultimately, that is the mission for a social enterprise. Their income strategies are tied directly to the mission so they can ultimately help in growing that impacted number. The second is they are driven by a blended value proposition. So this is a balance of consideration of financial, social, environmental, or cultural returns. So oftentimes, for-profit companies are focused on a singular bottom line approach, which is all about the profits. We want to make money and I want to make lots of it. Where um, social entrepreneurs are a little bit different because they don't only focus on the for-profit part because that also is a big component of social entrepreneurship. They certainly do, but at the same time, they do the blended value proposition of not only financial, but also social and environmental environmental or cultural return. So again, it's all about that mission, but helping to drive the mission through those for profit strategies. So really, the main goal of a social entrepreneur is not to earn a profit like we have talked about, but rather to implement widespread improvements in society. So again, a lot of social enterprises are not only focused on the single bottom line approach. It's that triple bottom line. It's about giving back to the people, the planet, and profits. It's all three of those things that make up the blended value proposition. So these are a couple of principles of a social enterprise. So how can you identify as a social enterprise? How can you, how can you tell? So the first is the intention. What is the motivation for creating the business? And where is that driving you from? So like we talked about, the sole mission of a social enterprise is to drive change. So when you look at a social enterprise, it's pretty clear what the intention is and how they're giving back. It's not just look at it and think, oh, they could be doing this or maybe they're giving back here. Usually through a social enterprise, it's very evident and clear what the motivation is for wanting to start this business. The next is impact. 
So things like this should be specific and they should be me measurable. So how, again, how do you identify a social enterprise? A really great way is to see what their impact is. Like we discussed um, on the past few slides, is that a lot of times social enterprises, they record their impact. So this is a really, really big component of being a social enterprise, is that because you're trying to change a social, environmental, or cultural challenge, ultimately we want to see how you're doing that and to what capacity. So it needs to be specific and it should be measurable. The last is income. So the revenue from the sale or service of a, or a product. So again, we need to keep in mind that a social enterprise does have that for-profit component. So that for-profit comes from a sale of a product or service. And we're going to talk about the importance of this in the next slide. So this is a fantastic chart drawn up by Pillar Nonprofit Network located in London, Ontario. Um, and I'd like to review the chart just a little bit more in depth. So you can see on the left hand side, we look at traditional for profit companies. So these are profit driven businesses that exist to create economic value for shareholders. So ultimately, they're only in it to earn money. We want to get rich and get rich fast. So basically, a lot of them sell a product um, or a service at profit. They are only bottom line. Um, focused, which means they're only about the profits. We're just trying to drive profits so we can maximize that shareholder value. But at the same time, this can potentially cause harm to society or the environment, as we are seeing a lot in the media recently. If we go over to the next pillar, corporate social responsibility. So we've also likely seen a massive shift in the in recent years of more organizations incorporating this concept into their business of corporate social responsibility. So this can include things like corporate sponsorships um, or philanthropic donations and the last is environmental or fair wage policies. So because of the pressure these organizations are receiving from the community, they have started to at least implement these programs to help give back to some of these issues and problems that we're seeing. Before we go on to the middle, I'm going to shift over to the right hand side. So this is one of the important pieces to remember because oftentimes social entrepreneurship does get confused with nonprofits and charities. So a charity is also a mission driven organization that relies um, on funding donations to support charitable purpose. So traditional nonprofit and charities, they are really mission driven, which is very similar to a social enterprise. However, charities are more focused on their revenue um, from funding and government donations. So you have to keep that in mind when you're thinking of starting a social enterprise. How are you making money? Are you relying on government funding? or community grants and individual donations because that's not a social enterprise, right? We talked about a social enterprise being a for-profit company from the sale of goods or services. When we look at you enterprising nonprofit, they generate some earned income to support their social or environmental impact. And they can do this as well through fundraising events, membership fees and corporate sponsorships. But then we come to the shift to the middle, that really nice sweet spot, which is the social enterprise, which incorporates both the traditional non-for-profit and traditional non-profit charity. They combine both aspects. So again, they use business strategies to maximize social or environmental impact. So they own and operate a revenue generating business and that profit is then used to grow and maximize the mission. So I'd like to just quickly go over the whole business model of a social enterprise. Usually it is two sided. So you will have the business side, which is where um, the revenue comes from, from that goods of sale of goods and services. And then on the other side, you have the social and environmental impact piece. So sometimes it is a two working model to be able to really help and alleviate the challenge that you're trying to solve. Sometimes that is a whole other component of, of the actual business. So um, a good example, uh, we're actually going to review in, in the next slide. 
So this business is called Tentry. Um, they are a Canadian social enterprise located out of Vancouver. And uh, if you'd like to learn more about um, their mission and some of the things that they're currently working on, please feel free to, to visit their website, um, tentry.ca. But essentially, this is the business model um, incorporated into Tentry. So on the business side, they sell clothing and accessories. And you, you can see a couple of photographs there of some of their apparel. So through the sale of this merchandise, they are then able to plant 10 trees for every item purchased. So this is a good example of a two-sided model. So basically, again, because of the sale of that good, it then goes back into the business to drive the mission of helping to plant trees. So the business case for social entrepreneurship. Sustainability will be the standard for businesses within the next 15 years. We are seeing an enormous push on really large corporations to start thinking about their environmental impact and how to decrease their carbon footprint. So the business case for social entrepreneurship is that it's, the, it's starting to happen now. There, its traction is being made. And so now is the perfect time for you know, customers, employees, investments, investors and government to, to all start thinking about how can this look like in 15 years and how can we start to make that shift happen but it's granular so now is the really great time to enter the market as you start to think about you can actually help a lot of these big organizations that are making this shift and there's a lot of support available to you because we're currently looking for people to help solve some of these major um, challenges that we're facing on a local and global scale. So how can your business make the shift? So one thing I'll really encourage that you think about is your first, your personal why. So what's important to you and what is something that you want to change in the world? So oftentimes when people think about starting a social enterprise, they refer to the UN Sustainable Development Goals. So if you look at those goals, you'll realize a lot of them are um, closely related to the environmental impact and social and cultural impact as well. So think about what is it that is important to you? Which one resonates with you? Where does your passion lie? And then how do you want to use that passion to change the world? So ultimately that goes into the next one, your business why. So how will your passion support the business? And how are you able to impact the community at large? So think about both whys and how they can come together. You're likely thinking about starting a social enterprise if you're listening to this presentation. So ultimately, first start with your personal why. What's important to you? And then think about how can I put this and make this into a business? How can I support my mission by that for-profit strategy of selling goods and services? So these are some additional resources if you're looking to learn more about social entrepreneurship. So um, the first one is a six module course, which is free. Um, it's a fantastic course if you're looking to dive a little bit deeper into social entrepreneurship. Um, the next one is just a, a very quick video. Um, it's a nice illustration of uh, social entrepreneurship and some of, some of the community benefits that can come from that. And the last is, what does it mean to start a social enterprise by Carleton University? So this is a really great one if you're thinking about potentially starting a social enterprise and you don't quite know where to start yet. It's a fantastic.